Pope Francis has taught something heretical yesterday. What's interesting about it is that it word for word contradicts the words of Pope Pius Twelfth. I know before we talk about, did Pope Francis really say that? Is it heretical? Well, if you look at it in Spanish, if you look at it in Italian, if you do this, if you do that. But in this case, I'm treading lightly here. I have searched my conscience. I have prayed because I don't want to say something that would endanger my soul, that would condemn me. But when you look at what Pope Francis has said, the text, and you look at what Pius XII has said about separating yourself from the church and what Francis says about the communion of saints, it is opposite of Pius XII. One man is right. They can't both be right today. Francis is right and Pius the 12th was wrong in 1943 or Pius the 12th was right in 1943 and Francis is wrong in 20, uh, 2022. That's it. Now, the other interesting thing about this is when Francis was teaching this heresy at the general audience, a layman begins to call out Francis for his errors he calls out the church as one holy Catholic and apostolic, that Francis is not leading the church as God wants him to, and that God has rejected Francis. I know there have been high-profile meetings with Pope Francis. People have spoke with him. Another reason that I find my conscience clean is because I met Francis and I gave him my book, Infiltration. Like, I'm trying to do my part. People say, oh, you just complain. But they were just complaining on YouTube. No. Got an airplane, flew over to Rome. Put the book in his hands. It's not much. But as a layman, what else can I do? What else can we do? So we're going to pray to our Father. Before we do, though, I'm going to show you the clip of the layman. This all happened on February 2nd, Candlemas, Feast of the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I'm going to show you the layman calling out Francis, and Francis acknowledges him and prays for him. It's really something to behold, something to watch. So we're going to watch this clip, and then we're going to go into the text, because today this is very important, very important. And actually, I want to ask you, I don't always do this, but at the beginning, I'd like you to share this video, because I think that this is a landmark day. This is a watermark day. All right, so here's the clip. Let me hit the play. This is the general audience yesterday in which Francis utters the errors. This is the man right here, pleading with Francis. Do you hear that? Ecclesia. One, holy, Catholic, apostolic. Let me ask yourself, if you were there and you heard Francis utter, say, heresy, error, would you do what this man did? You can hear him saying, the church is not the way God wants it. And then he says, God rejects you, Father. Getting arrested. That's where he says, God has rejected you, Padre, Pope, Father. You want to see it again? Oh, 
Rejecto. Okay, so that was the altercation of the layman calling out the Pope for his errors and saying that the church is not the way God wants it and God rejects you. For example, this is the Euro News, 1.97 million subscribers. It says right here, Euro News is funded in whole or in part by the European Union. Okay, so and here's the translation that they're putting up. The church is not the way God wants it, the man repeats. While being led out of the hall by two Vatican police officers and a Swiss guard without resisting, the man yells, God rejects you, Father. You're not a king. All right, now, the Francis now acknowledges what happens. This is very interesting, and there's, in this case, there's subtitles on the screen, okay? Do you see why this is so important today? Many minutes ago, una persona que gritaba, escribaba, que aveva qualche problema, non so se fisico, psichico, spirituale, ma un fratello nostro in problema. Io vorrei finire pregando per lui, il nostro fratello che soffre, poveretto, se gridava è perché soffre a qualche bisogno non essere sordi al bisogno di questo fratello okay i'm gonna play that back right here and just kind of go through it because this to me is insulting i mean i guess from francis point of view he was just insulted but this is an insult back he says we heard a few minutes ago a man screaming screaming shouting he has some problems See, that? it's not I, Francis, have have caused division and chaos and and conf, uh, loss of faith. You know, since Francis's pope, Italian vocation of the priesthood are down thirty something percent. It's not he who has the problem; it's this man who has the problems. Problema, non so se fisico, psichico, spirituale, ma un fratello nostro. In problema. Io vorrei finire pregando per lui, il nostro fratello che soffre, poveretto, se gridava, so è perché soffre. He's shouting because he was suffering. Piso. He is suffering, Francis. I, I don't think you fully understand why he is suffering. He is suffering because he sees the one holy Catholic and apostolic church being shattered by the confusion that you are imposing upon the Catholic Church. The Holy Ghost is not the author of confusion. He has some needs. Yes, he does have some needs. All right. We're going to pray now, and then we'll get into the text. Um, by the way, if anyone knows this Italian man, I would like to speak with him. I'd like to be in touch with him. That would be great. Maybe he'll come on the podcast. I'd love to interview him and say, what were you saying? Why were you saying this? Did you understand what Francis was saying? Were you protesting what Francis was saying? All right, everybody still with me? Okay, we're going to pray the Our Father for Francis Bergoglio. And then we're going to look at what Francis is teaching, why it is wrong, why it is heretical. Oremus. Nomini Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, venia regnum tuum, via voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panam nostrum quotidianum de nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos a malo. Amen. Nomini Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, well, yesterday, Pope Francis discussed the nature of the church and communion, the communion of the saints. And I'll play a clip. I'm going to read you the text because the texts are very important because we're going to compare them with what Pius XII. And you're going to see that Francis is dead wrong on this topic. Again, I just want to say from the beginning, I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't want anyone to be in schism. I don't want people to hate the Pope or have animosity for the Pope or the Holy See or for bishops or cardinals. I just want to get to heaven and I want everyone else to get to heaven. And we get to heaven through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, by having 
perfect faith in the doctrines and the morality of the church by having hope and charity towards God through Christ and persevering, which requires the grace of the sacraments and prayer and penance. This is what I hope for. This is why I became a Catholic, because I truly believe these things, and I see Francis destroying these things. Persecuting traditional priests. Banning the traditional Latin Mass. Horrible things. Horrible things. All right. Here is the, <clears throat> the clip of Francis getting into some of the problems that we're going to go over today on the nature of the church. And I'll play it. Here it goes. Pensiamo, cari fratelli e sorelle, in Cristo nessuno può mai veramente separarci da coloro che amiamo. Okay, so here's the thing. No one can separate us from the bond of the church. This is the teaching of Francis. We're going to see that this is totally wrong. No one can separate us from the church. Now, it is true. Paul says no one can separate us from the love of God. That's different than being inside the church. Perché il legame è un legame esistenziale, un legame forte che è nella nostra stessa natura. Cambia solo il modo di essere insieme a ognuno di noi. Ma niente e nessuno può rompere questo legame. Nothing can break this bond, he says. E, padre, pensiamo a coloro... And he brings in a rhetorical question. Uh, padre, what about people who have denied the faith, apostates, persecuted the church, denied their baptisms? Are these also at home? Hanno rinegato la fede, che sono degli apostati, che sono i persecutori della Chiesa. Denied their baptism. Are they at home? Yes, these two, all of them. They're in the casa. Tutti. I bestiamatori, tutti. The blasphemers, tutti. All of them. Siamo fratelli. We are brothers. Questa è la comunione dei santi. This is the communion of the saints. Okay, so what he's saying is you can be an apostate. You can deny the faith. You can persecute the church. You can outright deny your baptism. And you're still in the communion of the saints. This is insanity. And this is great error. Let me tell you where it leads. Judas Iscariot, baptized, one of the apostles. He is not in the communion of the saints. Let's look at another example. Adolf Hitler. Did you know Hitler was baptized as a Catholic child? That is, Hitler was a member of the Catholic Church for a time. That doesn't mean he ended his life in the Catholic Church. And it sure doesn't mean that Hitler is a member of the communion of saints. Which is what Francis is teaching. Yeah, but Taylor, I mean, it's, no, this is dead serious. So what I'm going to do, just so you say, well, Taylor's just mistranslating. He's stretching. I'm going to go to the Vatican website. They've already put up the Pope's audience. And I'm going to read from you the official English translation on the Vatican website. So that you won't think or say, I'm just making all of this up. I don't want it to be true because this is a nightmare and I don't want to live in a nightmare. I don't want to live in a reality, I have to, where a man in a white cassock in Rome is saying these things. So just so you know, here I am, Vatican.va, Pope Francis, general audience at the Paul VI audience hall, which is ugly and disgusting if you've ever been inside of it. People call it the Serpent Hall. February 2nd, 2022. That's yesterday, Candlemas. We're going to go to paragraph three. I have it highlighted. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to have you compare it to what Pius XII says. You make the decision. I'm just a dad on a webcam. I am not a canonized saint. 
Far from it. I am not a bishop. I am not a cardinal. I'm not a pope. I'm going to, but you know what? You can read contradictions. And as a human, you can see one person is saying X, Y, Z, and the other person is saying not X, Y, Z. And that's exactly what we have in this situation. So I'm going to go ahead and read. You can follow along with me on the screen. Francis says, quote, what then is the communion of saints? The catechism in the Catholic Church affirms the communion of saints is the church, number 946. I would actually say if you read this book, the Catechism of the Council of Trent, Thomas Aquinas and others, the communion of saints and the church are not equivalent. Otherwise, both of them wouldn't be in the creed. There's obviously a distinction. What is it? The church is the mystical body, this is Pius XII, is the mystical body of Christ on earth that has wheats and tares in it. There are bad people in the church, obviously. I mean, I wrote a book, Infiltration. There's bad people in the church. Christ talks about how there's, there's wheat and cockle, wheat and tares in the church. But the communion of saints is that heavenly reality, and it's the eschatological reality. In other words, at the end of time, when Christ comes and judges the living and the dead, and purgatory is closed forever, and there's the saints in heaven and the damned in hell, the communion of saints, that perfect communion of humans who have been sanctified, that will be a real ontological eternal reality in heaven forever. We experience it in the church by asking the saints to pray for us, to be exemplars for us, to be models for us, to appeal to their merits and their prayers. That's the communion of saints. So to equivocate and say the church is the community of saints and the community of saints is the church is, is not exactly accurate. And unfortunately, the catechism of the Catholic Church, the new one, which is why I don't, I don't usually recommend it anymore, does say this at number 946. And because of this confusion, Francis is now going to crack open and make problems. What does this mean? That the church is reserved for the perfect? No. He says... No, it means that it is the community of saved sinners. The church is the community of saved sinners. It's beautiful. This definition, no one can exclude themselves from the church. And here's where we get into the problem. No one can exclude themselves from the church. We'll see, Pius XII dogmatically says that you can exclude yourself from the church. Pope Francis says, we are all saved sinners. Our holiness is the fruit of God's love manifested in Christ who sanctifies us by loving us in our misery and saving us from it. Thanks always to him, we form a single body, says St. Paul, in which Jesus is the head and we are the members. The image of the body of Christ and the image of the body immediately makes us understand what it means to be bound to one another in communion. Let us listen to what St. Paul says. If any member suffers, St. Paul writes, all the members suffer together. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with him. Now you are the body of Christ and each according to his part, his members. This is what Paul says. We are all one body, all united through faith, through baptism, all in communion, united in communion with Jesus Christ. And this is the communion of saints. This latter part is correct. We're united in faith. But if a person denies their faith, denies their baptism, denies the dogma of the church, he leaves our fellowship. He leaves the church. He enters into the outer darkness. He steps off of Noah's ark into the seas. This is classic Catholic teaching. But then let's see where Francis goes with it. Dear brothers and sisters, the joy and sorrow that touch my life affect everyone just as the joy and sorrow that touch the life of the brother and sister next to us also affects me. I cannot be indifferent to others because we are all in one body in communion. In this sense, even the sin of an individual person always affects everyone, and the love of an individual person affects everyone. In virtue of the communion of saints, this union, every member of the church is bound to me in a profound way. But I, I do not say to me because I am Pope. I say to each one of us is bound. We have been bound and bound in a profound way, and this bond is so strong that it cannot be broken even by death even by death. In fact, the communion of saints does not concern only those brothers and sisters who are beside me at this historical moment or who live in this historic moment, but also those who have concluded their journey, the earthly pilgrimage, and crossed the threshold of death. They too are in communion with us. 
Let us consider, dear brothers and sisters, that in Christ, no one can ever separate us from, from those we love because the bond is an existential bond, a strong bond that is in very nature. Only the manner of being together with one another with them changes. Oh, sorry, one another to them changes. But nothing and no one can break this bond. Quote, rhetorical question. Father, let's think about those who have denied the faith, who are apostates, who are persecuted the church, who have denied their baptism. Are these also at home? Casa, he says. Yes, these two, all of them. The blasphemers, Tutti, all of them. We are brothers. This is the communion of saints. The communion of saints holds together the community of believers on earth and in heaven and on earth, the saints, the sinners, all. How can it be that Hitler is still in the communion of saints, Francis? How can it be that Judas Iscariot is in the communion of saints right now? How can it be that people who formally renounce their Trinitarian baptism and renounce Jesus Christ are still in the church for one, and then take it to the next level, Francis says they're in the communion of the saints. Brothers and sisters, let us not be deceived that those like Hitler, like Judas Iscariot, they are not in the communion of saints. They are not Saint Adolf Hitler and Saint Judas Iscariot. This is dangerous teaching, and it's wrong, and we must reject it. It doesn't matter if an angel from heaven says this or a man in a white cassock at the Vatican says it. We must reject it. And that's why we saw this man stand up to Francis. This man. This man stand up to Francis and call him out on the nature of the church. He's reciting the Nicene Creed. This is prophetic. Someone says, what about Joseph Stalin? Yes, he was baptized as an infant, which brings him into union with the mystical body of Christ. You're going to tell me that Stalin is in the communion of saints? Now, when I heard this yesterday, I took a deep breath. I said, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to get some more translations. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. I'm going to go back into my Thomas Aquinas you want to read about this in Thomas Aquinas, by the way, you want to go to Summa Theologiae, book three, question eight, article three, especially odd two, response to objection two. He talks about it there. It's the same teaching as Pius XII. It's the same teaching of the Catholic Church from all time. It's probably the teaching that all of you watching hold in your heart because you are a Catholic. I also pulled out my Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma by Ott. What I like about this is you can go to it and he goes through the doctrines and then he gives you actual references to go to, to go for further reading. And I thought this was going to be handled by Pius XII. And sure enough, that's who Ott quotes. He quotes the encyclical. Mystici Caporis. It's from 1943. I'm going to read parts of it to you today. And he talks about who is inside the church. Obviously, if you're baptized as a baby, you're in the church. But does that mean that you're always in the church till you die? What if you do a mortal sin? Does that kick you out of the church or not kick you out of the church? So let's take a look. The short answer, by the way, is given by Thomas Aquinas and by St. Augustine in the Donatist controversies. A mortal sin does not, it takes away grace from your heart and charity towards God, but it does not remove you from the church, except for three sins in particular. Heresy, apostasy, and schism, which is what exactly our Pope, 
Pius XII teaches us. Let's take a look. Here's the quotes. All right, Pius XII. Only those who are to be included as members of the church who have been baptized and profess the true faith and who have not been so unfortunate as to separate themselves from the unity of the body or have been excluded by legitimate authority for grave faults committed, end quote. Francis just told us there's nothing that can separate you from the body of Christ, from the church. Francis is teaching what evangelicals call once saved, always saved. That's not true. That's not Catholic. It's heretical. So here, Pius XII is using the exact same words, but denying what Francis is trying to teach you. He says, only those are to be included as members of the church who have been baptized and profess the true faith and who have not been so unfortunate as to separate themselves from the unity of the body. Francis says you can't separate yourself. Pius XII says you can separate yourself. Let's choose right now. How many people are watching? Over 2,000. I want to hear you in the comments or in the live chat. Francis says... You cannot separate yourself. Pius XII says you can separate yourself. Which one is correct? I'll give you all a moment. The 2,000 of you watching right now. Who is correct? They're not both correct. Today you choose. Pius XII, right here. Or Francis. Leave a comment in the live chat. Now, you may ask yourself, okay, so Pius XII says you can separate yourself from the church. How does one separate themselves from the church? Pius XII says, I'm glad you asked because I'm about to tell you in the very next paragraph. This is number 22. And Pius XII as a good theologian, as a good teacher, a good shepherd, a good pope, explains it for us in 23. Excuse me for putting on the screen, I'm running out of space. Pius XII says, Nor must one imagine that the body of the church, just because it bears the name Christ, is made up during the days of its earthly pilgrimage only of members conspicuous for their holiness, or that it consists only of those whom God is predestined to eternal happiness. It is owing to the Savior's infinite mercy that place is allowed in his mystical body here below for those whom of old he did not exclude from the banquet. In other words, there are sinners. There are people in the church right now and have been people in the church who were once members of the one true church, the Catholic church, but have since gone to hell. They started off on the right path. They were like the seed that was cast uh, by, by the guy on the path. And it took root. It began to grow. But then the sun scorched it and it withered up and it didn't, it didn't last. It didn't take deep root and then produce 30-fold, 50-fold, 100-fold as Christ teaches. So it started in the church and then it, it, it didn't get to heaven, the seed. Then he says, for not every sin, however grave it may be, is such as of its own nature to sever a man from the body of the church, as does what? Schism or heresy or apostasy, end quote. So, if you, let's just take an example. John, this guy named John. John is a Catholic. He was baptized as a baby. He's been Catholic his whole life. He believes everything the Catholic Church teaches. He has faith. He has hope. He has charity in his heart. He has sanctifying grace in him. Great. John goes and commits adultery. He still believes everything the Church teaches. 
he still hopes in Christ. He has faith and hope. But by committing the mortal sin, he has lost the bond of charity. Pius XII and Thomas Aquinas in Summa Theologia 3, question 8, teach that John is still a visible member of the Catholic Church. If someone says, John, what religion are you? He says, I'm Catholic. Do you belong to the Catholic Church? Yes, I belong to the Catholic Church. Does he have grace in his heart? And if he died right then, is he going to go to heaven? Objectively, no. He's in a state of mortal sin, unconfessed mortal sin. But he's still a member of the visible church. Pius XII explains, though, there are grave sins. He says over here, grave faults committed that separate you from the church. So there are certain mortal sins that not only kill grace in your heart, in your soul, but they remove you from the visible Catholic church. And he lists what those sins are. They are right here. Schism, that is actually removing yourself from the church. Heresy, denying the Catholic faith. Or apostasy. What is apostasy? Apostasy is when you formally and publicly deny Jesus Christ. You deny God. If you went on TV or you went to the town square and you said, I renounce my baptism, I I can't even say the words, but I renounce the Lord. I am no longer a Christian. I am no longer Catholic. I fully renounce it. That's apostasy. You do that, you're no longer a member of the visible church. You set up your own church like Martin Luther or Henry VIII. That's a schism. You are no longer a member of the Catholic church. You teach heresy, proclaim heresy, believe heresy, consume heresy deny the teaching of the church, you are now removed from the Catholic Church. And yet, Francis, as we saw over here, oh, wrong, wrong window, here, he says that you can be, here's the, here it is. He says that you can be an apostate, a persecutor of the church, deny the faith, deny your baptism. Are you still home? Francis says, yes, these, all of them, the blasphemers, all of them. We are brothers. This is the communion of saints. So this is why Francis has a statue of Martin Luther at the Vatican, because he believes Martin Luther is still in the Catholic Church. He believes Martin Luther is still in the communion of saints. Shocking. He believes Henry VIII is still in the Catholic Church in the communion of saints. Arius. Nestorius. The Gnostics. Hitler. Stalin. And my question as I read this, I was thinking, okay, well, the last few months, Francis has been persecuting traditional Catholics. And there's this, you know, Archbishop Rose is very serious if you do this. If they excommunicate people or declare them in schism or say you're not in communion, doesn't that mean nothing given what Francis has just taught in yesterday's general audience? I mean... If you can never, ever separate yourself from the church, if you out there can never separate yourself from the communion of saints, I mean, wouldn't that mean that if you became a Lutheran, you're still good? Or let's say you became a set of a contest. Or you said, you know, people say, oh, you're SSPX, that's outside the church. You could say, well, actually, Francis says there's nothing I can do to separate myself from the Catholic church, from the communion of saints. Nothing. I could go to the town square and renounce my baptism and renounce the holy name of Jesus Christ. And according to Francis, I'm still in the communion of saints. I am still, to use his words, home. Right here. Yes, these two, all of them, the blasphemers. What he's saying is you can be a blasphemer. You can be an apostate. 
You can be a heretic, you can be a schismatic, and you're still in the church and you're still in the communion of saints. That reality can never be broken. That's once saved, always saved. That's what your mega church, a lot of your mega church and your Baptist friends are going to teach. And it's he says it, it's recorded, it's written down. I don't want people to say, well, yeah, but Taylor in the Spanish, it would mean this. Or, yeah, but in the Italian, it would mean this. Or, well, yeah, but Vatican II, or... Well, yeah, but Pope Pius XII didn't understand ecumenism. I don't want to hear this anymore. Everyone and their brother wants to make a podcast pop shot trying to say, well, yeah. If you actually look at the text, it's not. Look, I've been very careful saying, mm, the savers of heresy, the smacks of heresy, this is erroneous this is contrary to thomas aquinas this is contrary to saint paul over and over and over you've heard me say this i've never really come out big and said this is heretical and today with all due respect to the vatican and the holy see and the catholic church this is 100 percent contrary to thomas aquinas in the clear teaching of pius the 12th from 1943 Some people have said in the chat, calm down a little bit. Okay, I'll calm down. But I still don't like heresy and confusion reigning inside the church. I stand with that layman who says, this is not what Christ wants in the church. Santo Padre. Would you want Francis to teach your children or grandchildren their catechism? Would you, tr would you leave Francis in a classroom without you there to teach you and other children the tenets of Catholicism? I would not. I would not allow my precious children to be taught error in the name of Christ in the name of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And I don't care if his title is Papa. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. I've heard enough. Would you let him teach? Leave a comment. Would you let him teach your children catechism? No, because they would come away thinking Martin Luther is cool. There's nothing I can do to ever leave the church. There's nothing I can do to separate myself from the communion of saints. I could become an apostate. I could mutilate my body. I could kill my own children. Um, I could blaspheme. And I would still be in the communion of saints. How ridiculous is this theology? How many souls will be deceived? How many souls have been deceived by this Jesuitical confusion? People are saying, what can we do? You know what I'm going to say. We're all lay people. And Our Lady, in 1917, seeing all this trouble coming upon the world, said, pray the rosary every day. Pius XII asked us to pray the rosary every day. Pius X asked us to pray the rosary every day. Pius, uh, Leo XIII wrote many encyclicals, pray the rosary every day. Pius IX, he said, pray the rosary every day as families. We must pray, we must read scripture, and yes, I'm, only, I'm not a shepherd. I'm not a shepherd. I'm a sheep. I'm not a shepherd. I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep on a webcam right now. But I guarantee you, when you're out with sheep, if a wolf runs in to the sheepfold and the shepherd is away, those sheep are going to be, mah, mah, and they're going to be telling all the other sheep, there is a wolf here. Look out. 
Y'all are about to die. Someone's going to get bit. There's about to be blood on the ground. A wolf is in the sheepfold. And I'm on a webcam right now going, bah, there is wolves. There is blood. There is danger amongst us. All I can do is let other people know, hey, do you want to get bitten by a wolf? Do you want a wolf to put his jaws on your throat? Look out. What does this mean for the church? I don't know. It scares me. It scares me. Robert Bellarmine says when a man, a pope is a manifest heretic, he falls ipso facto immediately from the papacy. In De Ecclesia elsewhere, he says he has to be warned two or three times. I don't think I'm qualified, but Holy Father Pope Francis, if you see this as a humble layman, Canon 212, I really think you need to revisit, change, and repent of the errors that you just taught to the whole church. That's all I can do. And again, I might be, maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Maybe Pius XII is wrong. I don't know. This doesn't sound right to me. There's obvious suggestions. I already see them in the live chat. Well, people are saying Benedict XVI is still the Pope. Could be the case. People are saying Francis never was the Pope. Could be the case. He certainly seems to lack the charism of the Vicar of Christ. He doesn't like the title Vicar of Christ. People say in the comments, well, the election in 2013 was invalid. People say Benedict XVI was still the Pope. Some people say he was elected validly, but because of his heresy, because he never answered the dubia of Cardinal Burke and Brown Muller and others, he fell from the papacy and lost the charism of St. Peter's keys. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not playing games with you. I'm not trying to grift you. I don't know. I do know that what Francis taught yesterday is not Catholicism. Once saved, always saved. Once in the church, always in the church. That ain't Catholic. But it explains why he likes von Balthasar, and it explains why he has statues of Martin Luther, and he creates stamps of Martin Luther. And it kind of goes on to the next level. Well, what about Abrahamic, what he calls Abrahamic people? You listen to him, he pretty much thinks that all Jews and Muslims are also going to heaven, even though they're not baptized and they don't believe in Jesus, which is just not in the New Testament. And then you say, well, yeah, but that's kind of exclusive because Abrahamic is just like Christian, Muslim, Jews, what about like the Buddhists and the Hindus? Well, yeah, I mean, are we going to exclude them too? What about the atheists? What this feels like is an NGO. It feels like an arm of the UN. It feels like a communist takeover of the Catholic Church. It's taking the buildings and the robes and the vestments, and the language, and the look, and the feel of Catholicism, but it's using it to promote a secular agenda. An agenda aligned with the UN in America, an agenda aligned with the Democratic Party. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe you think, man, he's just a, such a conspiracy theory person. Well, look around the Catholic Church. Does it look healthy to you? Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. So yeah, Pope Pius XII has condemned as heretical, as erroneous what Francis taught yesterday. A layman 
got up in the church, not in the church, what in the church, it was in the Serpentine Hall, and uh, called him out. I don't know what he's holding in his hand, but he's calling him out. He doesn't resist. He says, God rejects you. I don't know if I would have said that, but maybe this guy knows something I don't know. Certainly feels apocalyptic. So let's pray our rosaries. Treat our Bibles every day. You reading the Bible every day? I am. I've missed a few days, but I have to do makeup, makeup work. But I'm with, I'm with you. I'm doing the Bible in a Year plan, New St. Thomas Institute. We've got to read the Bible every day. We've got to read our Catechism of the Council of Trent. We've got to find a traditional Latin Mass. You might have to move. You might have to have a, find a new job. You might have to relocate your family. By the way, Tuesday night, I went to a men's night at a traditional Catholic church, TLM. We had benediction, chant, incense, 50, 60 guys chanting in Latin together, and then went outside for a bonfire and some drinks and some cigars. I was so encouraged. You know, sometimes you read these things and you're like, man, everything's so messed up. But then you go to an event like that with a bunch of Catholic men, Catholic dads, sit out by a bonfire, smoke a cigar, talk about the faith. It's really encouraging. You know, and I was like, man, we there's Catholics all over the world right now that don't have what I'm experiencing. I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to say I had sympathy, empathy for the plight of many people. I texted a, a priest friend of mine. I said, man, I just came from this traditional Catholic Men's Night of Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, chanting, Litany of St. Joseph in Latin. Really encouraging, edifying. I feel so much better. I'm with my people. Find your people. Find your people. If you have to move, trust me, it's worth it. If you have to get a new job, you don't make as much money, I know that's a hard decision. I'm not telling you what to do. But I think it's worth it to have that community for your wife, for your children, for yourself, for your grandchildren. It's important. That's why I say talk to realestateforlife.org. They'll help you sell your house. It's amazing. I talked to realestateforlife.org the other day. So many people are calling like, I want to move. And I want to move to Texas. Or I want to move to Kansas City. Or I want to move to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. People are selling their properties and moving so they can be by traditional Catholic churches. It's the great Catholic migration. People, are, y'all are actually doing it. It's amazing. And you have more faith and more devotion to I do because I'm just here. It comes easy. I don't have to make that decision. But there's people making hard decisions to find traditional Catholic community edification. It's important. And that's all I have for you. I don't have a petition for you to sign. I don't have a, a, a private revelation I don't have any visions. All I have is go to the Latin Mass, go to confession every two to four weeks, read the Bible every single day, teach yourself and your kids traditional Catholicism with tra traditional catechisms, like the Catechism of Council of Trent or Baltimore Catechism for your First Communion for your kids. Get to heaven. Get to heaven. Maybe. And then here's a call to people upstairs. If you're a cardinal or a bishop or a priest, maybe it's time to put on the big boy cassock and start preaching and calling out truth. Can't all be lay people on webcams all the time. I would love to just go back talking about Thomas Aquinas. I don't even want to talk about this stuff anymore. But I don't hear priests. I don't hear bishops. Yeah, I know. Bishop Schneider, Archbishop Vigano, Bishop Strickland. Can we get some more people? Some more bishops? Can we get some more purple zucchettos getting after it? Shepherds, not sheep.
We can go, bah, but the shepherds have the crozier. They got the hook and the spike. They have the authority. Be great, wouldn't it? Now, all you out there in the comments, wouldn't it be great if our bishops were fighting the wolves off so that we weren't getting bit? I mean, we're just out here going bah, bah to each other. Wolves are here, wolves are here, wolves are here. All right, speaking of prayer, let's pray the Hail Mary. Let's ask our Blessed Lady to protect us and help us. Nomine Patris, Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et or mortis nostre. And for Francis, and for the church, and for the hierarchy, and for all of us, that we will one day be at home with Christ in heaven, let us pray. Let's do the ninefold Kyrie. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicuterat in Principio et Nunc et Semper. In secula, seculorum. Amen. Nomini Patris, et Fidii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. Stay close to Jesus Christ. If you're confused by things you hear from bishops and popes, Pope Francis, compare it to the popes of the past, like Pius XII. Maybe go read uh, Mystici Caporis, the 1943 encyclical on the church. It's very good. It's very clear, unlike the things we get today. Pray the rosary every day, and remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth, so go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed, and may Christ have mercy on me.